Hello everyone, I am uh, Dr. Sambit Das. I am an endocrinologist and professor in endocrinology at High Tech Medical College, uh, Bhubaneswar, India. So, uh, in the recent uh, concluded conference, we, uh, the annual conference of Endocrine Society of India, we call it as ESICON 2021 held in Bangalore, uh, I was given the topic of half, it is uh, otherwise known as hypoglycemia associated autonomic failure. So, uh, what is half? So, that's the first question. So, we all know that uh, one of the inherent problem of uh, stringently controlling the blood glucose in any patients of diabetes is actually different episodes of hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia is part and parcel of a stringent glycemic control in any diabetic patients. But uh, once the blood glucose goes below 70 milligram per deciliter, we call it as an episode of hypoglycemia but the problem is that once the hypoglycemia starts the body has got its own defense mechanism so it uh, comes into force once an episode of hypoglycemia has been encountered so the first defense against hypoglycemia is reduction of the beta cell insulin secretion that's the first uh, primary glucose regulatory factor or the first defense against hypoglycemia the second defense is once the blood glucose goes down further low, the alpha cells start secreting more amount of glucagon and that's the second uh, defense mechanism. And after this, the third defense mechanism comes, which is very important, is an increase in the sympathoadrenal outflow. So that's an increase in the epinephrine and norepinephrine that, that not only increases the blood glucose, but it actually induces the symptoms of hypoglycemia. like. Uh, uh, it induces hunger so that the patient starts eating and that's a defensive mechanism uh, protecting against hypoglycemia. And after that, there would be other hormones which will be secreted like uh, cortisol or growth hormone that can be secreted. But the problem happens when there is a recurrent attacks of hypoglycemia. So once this recurrent attacks of hypoglycemia happens, the whole defense mechanism, the threshold goes down. So uh, the first defense of insulin uh, lowering is gone, the second defense of increasing glucagon is gone and then the sympathoadrenal defense will also be lowered to a lower glucose threshold. So the definition of and that we call it as hypoglycemic uh, associated autonomic failure. So the definition of half is it's a reversible attenuated sympathoadrenal response to an episode of hypoglycemia due to recent antecedent iatrogenic episodes of hypoglycemia and it has got two components one is because the sympathoadrenal response is lowered so there is a defective counter regulation and the second part is there is hypoglycemic unawareness that means even at hypoglycemia the person is not able to per perceive or not able to show the neurogenic symptoms of hypoglycemia that means tremors sweating and other symptoms of hypoglycemia. So there is a defective glucose counter regulation and hypoglycemic unawareness. Now there are some risk factors for uh, half. We, uh, the people who have absolute endogenous insulin deficiency, mostly the type 1 diabetic children or people suffering with advanced type 2 diabetes where the beta cell function is lost, they are at more higher risk for half. A history of severe antecedent hypoglycemia also perpetuates recurrent severe hypoglycemia so that is another uh, risk factor for half. Prior exercise sleep may induce uh, this uh, autonomic dysfunction. Aggressive glycemic therapy or lowering the A1C to what is not required may induce a half in that patients. So the next question which is uh, important is why are we concerned about half? What are the consequences of half? Now it has been shown that people who have hypoglycemia associated autonomic failure land up in severe hypoglycemia and that that in 17 fold higher in type 1 diabetes and 6 fold higher in type 2 diabetes patients and hypoglycemic unawareness is approximately present in 40 patient of people with type 1 diabetes during the life course. The second problem with half is that it, uh, it actually uh, pushes the patient to poor cardiovascular outcome and it has been shown that Episodes of hypoglycemia can actually lead to major adverse cardiovascular events at that time of hypoglycemia. Cardiovascular diseases and other non-cardiovascular deaths are also increased during hypoglycemia. 
people or children with type 1 diabetes can have cognitive and intellectual dysfunction elderly people can have dementia there are psychological consequences with half or recurrent hypoglycemia the quality of the life of the person who suffers from hypoglycemia associated autonomic failure is definitely lower then there are economic burden associated with the family and the uh, society as a whole if the person lands up in recurrent hypoglycemic episodes so the next point is how are we going to prevent or treat and hypoglycemic autonomic failure now the prevention is better than treatment and the best treatment is to avoid hypoglycemia stringently for the next 2 to 3 weeks we must increase the blood glucose to a higher threshold and keep the blood glucose higher and stringently avoid hypoglycemia for the next 2 to 3 weeks the other thing which we can do is acknowledging the problem self management in terms of uh, frequent monitoring of the blood glucose maybe with a glucometer device or with a uh, cgms device flexible and appropriate insulin therapy maybe we can use uh, better insulin like uh, basal insulin second generation basal insulin which doesn't doesn't produce hypoglycemia or maybe short acting insulin analogs are better than the conventional regular insulin individualized glycemic goal we have to do we should not be very tightly controlling the blood glucose especially in elderly people or those who are at risk of uh, hypoglycemic autonomic failure and ongoing pro uh, professional guidance and support system is very important for this group of patients there are some newer treatment which are available for example the islet cell transplantation has been shown to be a very good therapeutic option for avoiding and half and uh, there are few uh, studies or randomized control trial which has shown that use of continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion may avoid hypoglycemia and frequent hypoglycemia and subsequently half there are some experimental medicines like uh, beta 2 agonists maybe methylxanthine derivatives or maybe a potassium atp channel uh, modulators that might be helpful in patients with half but then again they are experimental they have not been tried in large trials so they cannot be uh, told to be very effective so in conclusion it's a half is a reversible attenuated sympathoadrenal response to hypoglycemia and the best therapy is to avoid stringent hypoglycemia for the next 2 to 3 weeks so that the blood glucose threshold is increased and the person can per perceive subsequent episodes of hypoglycemia it is more common in type 1 and also in advanced type 2 diabetic patients and one has to be careful so thank you again for uh, listening to this uh, talk in a very short and crisp manner thank you